Ever since I was a kid, I have always admired superpowers, whether in comics or movies. But of course, we can't really have superpowers in real life. So the best thing we can do is to use visual and superpower special effects. <laughs> So in this video, we are going to make a superpower effect using After Effects. But, 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 disclaimer, no, this is going to be a fast tutorial, so we won't really tackle every step by step in how I did the effect on the software. So make sure to have a basic knowledge in AE first before you dig into this tutorial. Once you're already settled, try na natin yan, and let's jump into the video. Try na natin ng pati ko, ayan. Kahit kulangin sa hangin na iubo. <laughs> the first thing we do, of course, is to shoot your video. It doesn't matter if you want to shoot it from a tripod or in a different angle. But for me, I opted for a shot where the camera is handheld and move backward when the actor does his superpowers. Now, after you shoot your video, let's jump in AE and import your footage and drag it into a new composition. Use the shortcut Ctrl Shift D to cut away excess part of the clip. You can select the layer and hold the mouse button to drag it in the timeline. The raw shot was originally shaky, so to fix this, go to the Effects and Preset tab in the middle right corner of After Effects and search for Warp Stabilizer. Drag it in your footage layer and wait for it to finish. Once it's done, you can see that the shot is now much more stable than before. Now the next thing we need to do is to pre-comp the layer so we can 3D track the stabilized video. To do this, right-click your footage layer and select pre-compose. Make sure that you choose move all attributes and hit OK. Once your footage is pre-comped, you can now right-click and hover your mouse to track and stabilize and select track camera. Once it's done analyzing, you will see a lot of points in your clip. Select the points that are going to be close where your effect is going to be. Right-click after and select create solid and camera. You will see a solid layer that is tracked and moved exactly on how your stabilized video does. Now, import your stock footage asset in After Effects and drag it into your composition. If you don't have one, you can find a lot of VFX beams in YouTube or in Production Crate. There's a lot of free assets there that you can download and use, but for me, I'm going to use the extinction pack that I got from Trion Digital. Now, after you import your asset, resize it and switch the blending mode to screen. If you can't see it, click the toggle switches mode below and select the normal and change it to screen. You will see that it removes the black background in the asset. Now click the toggle switches mode again and turn the asset into a 3D layer. Now select the solid layer that we created earlier and copy the transform data of it by pressing the transform below the drop down box of the layer and hit Ctrl C. Once you did that, select the asset layer and paste the transform data by pressing Ctrl V. Now you will see that the asset is now almost aligned to where your solid layer is. It just needs a few more adjustments, so to adjust, just use the three axis color that you will see in the middle of your asset and position, rotate, and scale it based on your footage. Now to really sell the effect and to make it more three-dimensional, duplicate your asset layer and turn it in the X axis to avoid the look of a 2D plane video. Now you're free to color correct your asset. Just use a lumetri color and drag it into the stock footage layer. Tweak the settings, mainly the exposure, temperature, and highlights. Change it based on the shot and also your likings. Now select the assets and also the camera layer. Right click and pre-comp. This will turn all the asset into a one layer and make it easier later to add more elements for realism. But as you can see, the elements have black background again. So just set the blending mode again to screen and it will all return back to normal. Now you can apply any effects that you want into the pre-comp element layer. You can add glow or color correct it again. And if you want to add more elements, just go inside the pre-comp layer and add the elements that you want and just copy the transform layer to the new asset that you added. But of course, make sure that you always turn all the asset first into a 3D layer before pasting the transform value and also setting the blending mode to screen. Just let your creativity run wild. Now to really sell the effect, we need to add a heat distortion effect. We all know that when there's heat, it distorts the view where the heat goes. So to do this, copy the camera layer from the element pre-comp, then paste it back into the main comp. Now add another asset that behaves more like a fire, and just like we did earlier, just copy the transform value of the solid to the asset and reposition it much more bigger than the main elements. Now add a tint effect to turn it to black and white. Now add an adjustment layer and apply a heat distortion effect. 
if you don't have the plugin and just use a turbulent displacement effect and change the size, amount, and the complexity into your liking. And to animate the distortion, just keyframe the evolution. Now once you're happy with the distortion, put the adjustment layer below in the black and white asset and set the track mat to Luma. Now you can see that the adjustment layer distorts the footage. This is a really great way to add more realism into your shot. Basically that's it. You can add more spices into the scene like lens flare and also some light bounce in the walls and make it more cinematic with color grade. But of course, that will be up to you. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. And remember, always trust your creativity. Michael's out. Hey, I'm gonna